Okay, welcome to the first ever Leadership in Lockdown vodcast. My name is Martin Edmondson. I'm the Chief Exec of GradCore. Uh, we're a social enterprise that works in university employability and graduate recruitment. Um, we've created this set of interviews to try and take a look at how different people uh, are handling the kind of leadership challenges under this period of lockdown and as we look ahead to the future. Um, it's a really tough time for everybody at the moment. Um, and a lot of big decisions and challenges sit on the shoulders of leaders of different organizations who are having to balance a lot of immediate challenges with the kind of thinking about the long term and, and how this is all going to play out over the next uh, few years. So we've invited various people from across uh, the worlds of higher education and early talent and, and kind of related areas to give us their thoughts on this. And, and I'm really pleased to welcome uh, Connor Moss as our first guest. Uh, Connor is the uh, Group Director of Business Engagement, Skills and Employability and, and Dean of Work-Based Learning at Sheffield Hallam, which is a, a lot to fit on a business card. Um, I'm not sure we'll ever be using business cards uh, again. Uh, but anyway, thanks for joining us, Connor. Um, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Mark Martin. Um, and uh, privileged to be your first guest. Um, uh, an honour to be here. Great. And um, so I, I don't know if you could just give us a bit of an insight into your role and, and maybe just a headline level, what you've been finding yourself working on in the last few months. Yeah, okay. Um, so core role is working across the university to, um, I suppose, interface between um, external and internal. Uh, and what does that mean? So so what does that mean for Hallam? So so first of all, there's the, the sort of business engagement side. Um, and that, that deals with everything from business support through to uh, student uh, and graduate employability. And then a large part of our um, our work is with um, work-based learning and degree apprenticeships, hence the, the Dean of Work-Based Learning title, which is a, uh, I agree with you, completely a, a long title. Um, so I suppose part of part of the, the, the role is trying to bring together all of those things. So how do we work regionally, nationally, with employers and across that whole range of things that they want to work with universities for? And then internally, how do we work across all our delivery um, departments to say um, how do you get the students the best experience um, for them to then succeed throughout their program and, and uh, upon graduation. Uh, so it, it's a multifaceted role. Um, it's one that's developed over the last few years. Um, in terms of the last six, eight weeks, um, it's been about delivering that, that core role, but probably on top of that, really thinking about the university's response to COVID you know, what, what, what role can, what can we play and are we playing in supporting both the NI and the recovery? Um, and I'm leading the business and economy strand for the university to, to really look at our, our um, response to that recovery plan. Well, there's a, there's a lot to think about, isn't there, both in the immediate term with that and then thinking about that recovery and kind of where we're going to go and, and really what's it all going to look like. It feels like it, a lot is up for grabs uh, in all of that. Um, so as you've been adapting and both personally and I guess in, in the leadership of your team, what, what have you found to be the biggest challenges of, of kind of, uh, of leadership in general during this sort of uh, this situation? Um, and there's been many. Um, it's been, it's been a, a, I think, almost probably one of the most exhilarating um, eight weeks uh, of my career, but then really, really difficult. Um, I, I think the first three four weeks was was just pure adrenaline on you know shifting our uh, we've got about 140 in the directorate so trying to get you know all those people working from home working remotely do they have the right equipment are they um you know safe and well do they have an environment that is conducive to work and, and clearly with that amount of people there's there's lots of um individual circumstances and, and so the, the biggest sort of challenge was um uh, really thinking about the balance, that personal balance. So how do I, I've got three kids. Um, mm -hmm. So how, how do I balance, you know, a really busy job. My wife's a doctor. So her balance. So, so there's a personal challenge. And e then equally thinking about the professional challenge and everyone else, um, you know, both within my directorate and beyond. They've also got their own individual circumstances that they're trying to work through. And it was, I think, I think the biggest challenge was, there was lots of innovation needed, lots of rewriting of policies, lots of solving of problems almost on a sort of hourly or daily basis. 
and you're sort of going at a really, really quick pace, but you're not, but you're sort of really conscious that you're putting pressure on people yeah. to also sure. respond to that. And so for me, the, the whole thing, whether it's my personal approach to this is how do I build balance and, um, and some sort of sanity into my day? Um, yeah. And how do I also not put too much pressure on um, my broader team? So, so I think, I think balance is, is probably the biggest challenge because at times when we have pushed too hard on the, we need to get this done, yeah. um, which feels like the right thing to do, but you, you often then um, uh, you know that people are struggling because they've got small kids running around or they've got a car to look after or, um, uh, or any number of reasons. Yeah. No, it's, it's really, it, you know, it's as much a health and wellbeing challenge, isn't it, as a kind of communication and technology challenge and that side of things. Yeah, and I think I think that is the the thing. We, we what we've done really well is trying to you know do regular reporting, regular communications with our teams. Well, I think we got a bit carried away about a meeting for everything, a Zoom meeting for everything, and it was just those really subtle things like, mm-hmm. do we need to be looking at each other on a on a square box? Could we just call each other? Because um, then you can take a walk around the block, and and you know almost that permission given. Um, yeah. both for our management team but also the broader directorate um, I think now we're in a phase of people the novelty's worn off and we can't quite see an end to it even yeah. when when the lockdown comes down there's going to be a sustained period so I think the, the bit now um, as we move into sort of early May is how are we going to sustain well-being performance engagement um, with the teams uh, as well yeah I guess people i mean obviously this is a this is a crisis with you know big personal real life implications for a lot of people a lot of people have died it's a it's it's got that that, that reality sitting behind everything but also it's a crisis you know there's a, there's a, that kind of notion of you know in in organizational terms of not kind of wasting a crisis in the sense of a crisis sometimes presents an opportunity for change you know in the right kind of ways do you think uh, were you know that's something you've been thinking about, or is or is it at the moment more a case of you know firefighting the immediate stuff? Um, no, I think I'm beyond the firefighting. Um, yeah. I, I, I I I did try and sort of quickly shift my brain into what what will this mean? What are some of the permutations? And of course, that's a, a fool's game. No one knows where we're going with all of this. Um, I think probably for me, what it's got us really to focus on is things that we were. We had it in our plan for the next uh, 18 months, uh, but actually we've, we've sort of, what would have taken 18 months, we've sort of done in uh, uh, a matter of weeks. So, yeah. so we probably split into three areas. So um, agile working. Um, now going remote doesn't mean agile, but actually what we've started to do is really think about what does agile working and thematic team working mean to us? Um, and, and learn our lessons through this process. Um, equally, the other area was around our service delivery. So whether that's careers um, support and, and yeah. uh, how we support students through this time, or whether it's about our delivery of degree apprenticeships. These are all things in our roadmap that yeah. we wanted to do more blended learning, we to do more digital first in our careers offer. Um, and obviously we've got a really detailed um, planning process and we've thought about you know how we're going to get to that journey and we've had to go rip up that plan we're going now um, so so you know from that perspective um, we'll not go back to completely the old ways of working um, and we'll learn the lessons to think about what was really great about that um, service that we delivered how might that when we go back to some form of normality how might the digital continue to enhance, but not replace everything? Um, and and um, there's something I suppose that's false about this whole situation, in that mm. everyone's remote, everyone's available to go online at the at the same time. You can have everyone in one meeting. We all yeah. know we've been in meetings where some people are in a room and some people are on um, on remote. Yeah, um, and we know it. It doesn't always work. So, so you know, it's a bit of a falsehood of, is this really what it's going to be like when we go back? Yeah, I saw I saw a really interesting report the other day. I think from some American kind of CEOs saying, 
you know, they've seen a real uplift in the productivity of their people working at home. And I think there's a kind of, maybe there's some real positives in that in terms of people having better work-life balance on some levels, but also there's a kind of, like you say, maybe a false positive in terms of, um, you know, remember this, that evidence has been gathered from a period when people can't do anything else. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. and, and is that going to be a true reflection of, of, of what life and work would look, look like if, if remote working became, you know, the default rather than office working? Or whatever? Yeah. And, and I, th I don't, you know, the default is, it's probably not, never going to be the default. It's always going to be a blend. And it's that, how do you manage the both? Some people that will yeah. be remote, some people will be in the office who just want to jump in for a short meeting. Uh, oh, well, let's get someone back up on to, to Zoom um, mm -hmm. for that conversation. So, so there is something inherently, um, you know, completely organizational changing in this process, but equally that's not also real about what it's going to be like in 6, 12, 18 months time. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think... That's one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is, is university campuses, lots of big buildings, you know, they're going to have to come back into use at some point in some shape or form, mm -hmm. if nothing else, because there's a lot of investment in them, you know, yeah. but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of proof now emerging that, you know, people can work flexibly and from home. Yeah. How, how do you see that playing out? Um, so, 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 you know, I, th I think at the minute what we have is um, everyone doing their best. And I've been absolutely astounded by um, how my team, the university, have pulled together. You know, we've shown ourselves to be um, fleet of foot. We've shown ourselves to be creative and innovative, um, yeah. willing to make big decisions quickly. Um, not all the things you would always say about a university, um, <laughs> but, but we have and we've had to. Um, but I think you have to sort of, um, you have to sort of, consider all of that in that students at the minute are quite forgiving of um, the, what we've had to deal with. Uh, yeah. our, our employer partners are, uh, as are we with, you know, people we're working with. Um, it, in a new normal world, the, as we do go in longer, we go on with a sort of um, this kind of delivery and this kind of approach. The expectations of, of the quality of delivery, how they deliver, the consistency of it will, will, increase because yeah you know, we've had longer we're out of a crisis this is a a, a normality um yeah. and i think there will be a sort of a, an urge both by the the students our employers our our employees to say let's get back into some form of normality will the university campus completely disappear i think it's it, it survived um more than this crisis uh, yeah. will will we have a a rebalance of you know lots of people lots of our professional services needing office space in city center potentially that 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 might change in the in the medium mm. and long term um uh what i think yeah. there will be certainly for hallam you know that that kind of um flexible approach to delivery where maybe for some universities, we've lost that, you know, we've got loads of, um, you know, it's been undergraduates, postgraduate people on campus. I think this has renewed our um, way of working. So it might be that we will, we will always have that sort of main campus approach, but equally this has given us uh, the confidence to say, we can deliver a flexible provision. We can deliver it at distance um, yeah. to a high quality. Yeah. Uh, and that might open all the op new opportunities as well. Absolutely. Okay. So, sort of starting to to kind of wrap up. I guess. I guess. Have you seen, as you think in terms of leadership more generally, have you seen any examples of leadership in either public life or in your own organisation? You know, that the, at, at Sheffield Hallam or anywhere else. I guess that that you've thought actually that's that's really, you know, that's a leadership example we could all learn something from. Either something they did or said or an approach they took. Um, no, no individual thing that sticks out. I think what I have, I, I suppose there's certain characteristics of things that, um, I've, I've, I think we have all tuned into and there's, that's the, each person behind one of these, um, celebrity squares is an individual. And, I, and that's not to say we didn't believe that before, but we're starting to see inside people's houses and their art on their wall and. Lots of people in Sheffield have Pete McKee 
um, uh, <laughs> pictures, by the way. Um, uh, but but we started. I think we, there's something very personal about you know being in someone's front room, their their bedroom, their office. Um, yeah. And I think there's been for me a much more connectivity to people uh, on a personal level and an informal level, mm. um, and and also a, a much more a, a, a caring about you know how people do in both from their physical and mental health, um, which, which has been great. I think probably on the opposite side, I've, I've sort of seen, you know, whether it's stuff on, on, on social, it's about, you know, if you don't come out of the lockdown, you know, a better person and more improved and done the things you always want to do, that drives yeah, yeah. you crazy, you know. Absolutely. Because most people are dealing with, like, major things at the minute. We're trying to work. We're trying to live first. We're trying to look Absolutely. after our family first and fit work on top of that. Um, and and so, so the bad side of it is, you know, this is your time to change your life. Um, actually, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't have much time for that. But, but the really good leadership I've seen is, is one where we've started to connect more as, as human beings, as individuals. Our empathy has come to the fore more than it maybe would in a, in a formal meeting room around a, uh, a, a university um, campus. Um, that might be naive for me, but I, I do think there has been a much more human connection. Um, uh, an interpersonal connection. I, th I think that's a great point, and I think um, I think there's a, you know, it's really important, isn't it, to take the positives out of out of this kind of environment and situation. And 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 yes, there are some really tough elements, but also, like you say, perhaps there's something there in the personal and the relationships and things, and that, that can be, uh, you know, enhanced by that kind of yeah. that kind of sharing and that kind of dynamic. Sorry, sorry, we can't share a whiskey today, by the way. But uh, <laughs> next time, next time. Yeah, next time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so, okay, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to sort of draw us to a close there, but just wanted to say a massive thank you for uh, joining us, Connor, and thanks for your insights and some ideas there and some thoughts for people. Really, really appreciate it. And um, uh, we hope, you know, obviously there's things in there that are useful for people as they're wrestling with uh, some of these thoughts and processes and, and, and challenges as well. So um, we're going to wrap it up there, but thanks for joining us, Connor. Really no good. worries. Uh, it was a pleasure. And, um, uh, and uh, for anyone watching, um, you know, keep an eye out for our kind of future editions of these. We're going to be speaking to some, some other really interesting people as well over the next uh, few weeks and months. And um, uh, stay healthy and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks.